Hello, hello, I'm Breton, one of our MCAT tutors here at Inspira Advantage, where we help students get into medical school and other professional programs. Welcome back, everyone. Today's focus will be on biosignaling and protein analysis. Understanding these concepts is crucial for navigating topics such as cell biology, biochemistry, and molecular biology. Starting with biosignaling. Ion channels play a critical role. These channels regulate ion flow into or out of the cell, essentially acting as gatekeepers. Ungated channels are always open allowing ions to pass through freely, whereas voltage-gated channels open within a certain range of membrane potentials or electric charges. Then we have ligand-gated channels. These open only in the presence of specific binding substances, often a hormone or neurotransmitter. Voltage-gated channels are typically most relevant in muscles or neurons. Next up are enzyme-linked receptors. These receptors participate in cell signaling by binding to extracellular ligands, triggering the initiation of secondary messenger cascades, this is a fundamental process in transmitting signals from the cell's exterior or extracellular side to its interior or intracellular side. You want to think of as you want to think of biosignaling as getting information from outside the cell to inside the cell. And what is this information doing inside the cell? Something, right? <laughs> it could be doing anything, whether it's causing more proteins to be uh, translated from RNA, could be causing a change in gene expression, could be changing the amount of microRNAs that are normally degrading other RNAs. It could be doing absolutely anything, but the key is it's doing something, right? If it's not doing anything, it's not biosignaling. It's just you're slapping a wall and nothing changes inside. So we need to change something inside for it to be biosignaling. Then we have G protein coupled receptors or GPCRs. These are integral membrane proteins, meaning they're spanning the membrane and they are involved in signal transduction. The receptor is coupled with a G protein, and when a ligand, the first messenger, binds to the receptor, it initiates the second messenger system, leading to a cascade of intercellular reactions. And there is a lot more going on with G proteins, but you don't need to know it for the MCAT, so I'm not gonna bore you with it. Though there is one weird piece of information you need to have memorized about a GPCR for the MCAT, and that is that it spans the membrane seven times. Why do you need to know this for the MCAT? Not sure, but it is <laughs> tested quite frequently. So make sure you know that the GPCR spans a membrane seven times. Moving on to protein analysis. The structure of proteins can be primarily determined using X-ray crystallography or nuclear magnetic resonance, NMR spectroscopy. The sequence of amino acids in a protein is determined using the Eggman degradation, a method of sequencing amino acids in a peptide. And this is all well and good, but we also need to know how to calculate the concentration of proteins. And typically in the lab, this is done col colorimetrically. That is by measuring the absorbance of light at specific wavelengths. UV spectroscopy or color change reactions can be used. Methods you want to be familiar with for the MCAT are Bradford assay, BCA assay, and the Lowry reagent assay. Each of these has its advantages and disadvantages. For instance, the Bradford protein assay, which uses color change from brown to green to blue, is the most commonly used and the one that you're most likely to see on the MCAT. But who cares? Just because we're going from brown to blue, how can we figure out how much protein's in there? Well, one of the best named laws in all of chemistry, the Beer-Lambert law. This is tying together the concepts of molecular absorption. It states that the absorbance of a solution is directly proportional to the concentration of the absorbing species in the solution and the path length of light through the solution. In simpler terms, more concentrated solutions absorb more light. Or for the Bradford assay, the bluer the water, the more protein there is. The calculation for calculating absorbance or concentration from a system is E times C times L, where E is the extinction coefficient, which is experimentally measured, C is the concentration in molarity, and L is the path length in centimeters of the measurement vessel. Usually this is just one centimeter. And this is weird, that's why I have super underlined it. It's normally we're doing things in meters, but for Beer-Lambert's law, it is in centimeters. And that's because the extinction coefficient is also measured in centimeters. But I have seen the MCAT do the extinction coefficient in meters before, so I guess pay attention for that as well. <laughs> really look for what is the unit on E, and that'll tell you if you need to be in centimeters or meters, because at the end of the day, those need to cancel out. I wanna thank you so much for watching our video on biosignaling and protein analysis, and I will see you next time.